We talk a lot about the iPhone settings you should turn off, but what about the settings that will break your phone if you don't leave them alone? There are more than you might think. We're gonna show you how to avoid these fatal mistakes. But first, let's talk about one of the best ways to stop big tech from tracking you on your iPhone. First, answer this question. Do you want websites to be able to track you across other apps and websites? I know I don't. Settings like this are what allow big tech companies to create a digital fingerprint for you. Your digital fingerprint can be used to identify exactly who you are online. Big tech companies have become scary good at identifying who we are, where we live, what we want, and a whole lot more. I like to limit how much data big tech can collect about me as much as possible. Let's open settings, scroll down, and tap on Safari, then scroll down, and make sure the switch next to prevent cross-site tracking is on. And it's not just Safari that's the problem. A lot of data is collected about you every time you open an email. You can't see them, but emails, particularly marketing emails, contain tracking pixels that can track pretty much anything you do, like opening an email, clicking a link, and much more. There's an iPhone setting that hides your IP address and loads the pixels, images, that remote content that's in the email privately in the background so the companies can't track you in all the ways David just said. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap mail, then scroll down and tap privacy protection and make sure the switch next to protect mail activity is on. Now that you're safer in mail and Safari, let's talk about another way to shut down hackers on your iPhone. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap general, then tap software update and tap automatic updates. Make sure the switch next to security responses and system files is on. When Apple releases a rapid security response, it means there's a significant vulnerability on your iPhone, and that could leave your iPhone open to hacks, data breaches, and more. We made an entire video about the signs your iPhone was hacked. We'll link to that in the card above and in the section below the subscribe button. There's another setting here in the general section of settings that if you turn off, your iPhone can break. But before we talk about it, we need to talk about how online security works. Security works online by comparing the date of the security certificate on the website to the date on your iPhone. If your iPhone's date and time don't match, then the website won't load. Let's tap back to the general section of settings, scroll down and tap date and time, and make sure the switch next to set automatically is on. Next, we'll talk about one of the most fundamental features of an iPhone, texting. iMessage is Apple taking text messaging to the next level. iMessages are in blue, text messages are in green. When you activate iMessage for the first time, your phone number gets sent to Apple so other iPhones know to send you iMessages and not text messages. If you turn off iMessage, those messages have nowhere to go. They just live on Apple servers until you turn iMessage on again. Let's head back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap on messages and make sure the switch next to iMessage is on. Why even have an iPhone if you aren't gonna use iMessage? I know, Google hates iMessage. Google has been trying to shame Apple into adopting RCS, which is their version of a next generation text messaging platform, which they actually kind of control, but Apple is not going to do that. Next, we're gonna scroll down in messages and take a look at the send as SMS and MMS messaging switches. When send as SMS is on, your iPhone will send regular text messages, which appear in green bubbles, when iMessage is unavailable. It's a good idea to leave this on. MMS stands for a multimedia messaging service. It's things like photos and videos. You definitely wanna be able to send those. And the most important reason to keep these switches on is that if you turn them off, you won't be able to text your friends with Android phones because they don't have iMessage. And one more setting here in messages is group messaging. When this is off, you can't have a text conversation with more than one person. Let's move on to a different section of the iPhone settings app and talk about two of the most important system services. Tap back to the main page of settings, scroll up and tap privacy and security, tap location services, scroll down, keep scrolling, tap on system services, and here we are. We have a lot of these settings turned off, but there are two that you definitely want to leave on. The first is Find My iPhone. If you have an Apple Care Plus theft and loss plan, but Find My iPhone isn't on, your phone won't be covered if you lose it. Second, emergency SOS. Let's just read what Apple says about it. When an emergency call is placed, in addition to a location already provided to emergency services, your iPhone or Apple Watch will make supplementary data available through the enhanced emergency data service. If you dial 911, they'll always get your location. This gives emergency responders more specific information about where you are, 
leave it on. These system settings can be confusing and the settings app overall can be a little bit tricky to navigate. That's why we created PDFs for our channel members so they know exactly which settings to turn off and turn on. To get those and a whole lot more, click the join button below this video. Bad things happen to good iPhones and that's why you should never turn off iCloud backup. If your iPhone gets lost or smashed, iCloud backup is a lifesaver. You can get your phone up and running again in just a matter of minutes. We're gonna tap back to the main page of settings. Scroll up and tap on your name at the top of the screen. Then tap iCloud, tap iCloud backup, and make sure the switch next to backup this iPhone is on. If you don't have enough iCloud storage space, there is a middle of the road solution. Tap on your iPhone. You'll see it's labeled this iPhone and turn off the switches next to the biggest apps. Golf Battle, 483.2 megabytes, I don't think so. Tap, turn off. Or sometimes you might have to turn off the switch next to iCloud Photos. In my opinion, even though it stinks, iCloud is something worth paying for. These next two tips are all about protecting your privacy when you're on a Wi-Fi network. Let's tap back to the main page of settings. Tap Wi-Fi, and then tap on the blue eye next to your Wi-Fi network, that's the information button and make sure private Wi-Fi address and limit IP address tracking are on. Private Wi-Fi address makes your iPhone look like a different piece of hardware on every different Wi-Fi network by changing its MAC address. No need to get technical there. Limit IP address tracking hides your IP address from known trackers like Google Analytics to help keep you anonymous online, but it's not a VPN like iCloud Private Relay. Right, iCloud Private Relay hides your IP address everywhere, but also has a nice way of breaking a lot of websites that you wanna visit. Like sports betting websites. And this next setting, it may sound obvious, but it's really important. My dad turned off cellular data recently. He has an unlimited data plan, but he was concerned about overage charges. Then he called me for help because his phone stopped working when he went outside. We won't get into his thinking in this video. That's beyond the scope of what we can talk about. But cellular data is something you should leave on. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, tap on cellular, and make sure the switch next to cellular data is on at the top of the screen. Your iPhone almost always uses Wi-Fi before cellular data if it's available. The only time you should turn off cellular data is if you're traveling overseas. Next, we're gonna tap on cellular data options and take a look at the data roaming switch. I have Verizon and data roaming isn't a thing anymore. So, unless you have a cell phone plan from the 90s, leave data roaming turned on. But you know what's still a thing and as relevant as ever? Public safety alerts. Let's head back to the main page of settings. Scroll down and tap notifications and scroll all the way to the bottom of this list and make sure Amber Alerts, Emergency Alerts, and Public Safety Alerts are on. Yes, there have been issues with this. A few years ago, residents of Hawaii hid their children in storm drains when they got an alert about an incoming ballistic missile. That was bad, but the system has been fixed. This next setting is one Apple recommends leaving on and we totally agree. Let's tap back to the main page of settings, scroll down and tap accessibility, tap display and text size and scroll down to the auto brightness switch. Turning off auto brightness can affect your battery life and long-term display performance. People run into trouble when they max out their iPhone's brightness and just leave it on all day. And especially with the iPhone 14 Pro and its 2000 nit display, that'll drain your battery super fast. Let's turn on the switch next to auto brightness and to learn about more settings Apple recommends leaving on, check out our next video that is appearing on the screen now.